Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Evil Live. I am one half of the hosts on this show, Evil, aka the Evil Tyrone, and I've got with me today. Lady Evil, welcome back, everybody. Yes, yes. We got another awesome show, another awesome show. It's great to be back another week, you know, discussing uh, the genre and, you know, just everything that surrounds it, you know. So this week, you know, we got some very, very special guests in the building tonight. You know, we got the paranormal investigators, the afterlife all stars. You know, we got got some folks coming to coming to kick it with us tonight, you know, uh, and some some friend, a friend of the show, you know, who's making her return, you know, who's always, always a joy whenever she kicks it with us. Uh, Miss Gina, she haunts in the in the building tonight, you know. Uh, yes, yes. So uh, yeah, click on the, uh, the, the, <laughs> here. <laughs> no, the, uh, here, here we go. Here okay. We go. No, I'm, no, I'm, uh, yeah, there we, there we go. Hey, Gina. Go. Hey, Gina. <laughs> How are you tonight? I am doing well. Thank you guys for having me back. I'm super happy to be hanging out with you, and it's always a pleasure. Oh yes, oh yes. Mm -hmm. We're we're always excited, you know, especially when you when you come on and you you know share some of your wisdom, some of your advice, and you know just some some of those tales, you know. That's that I'm that I'm always we're always amped to hear, always amped to hear, you know. And uh, glad that you brought your team with you today. Yes, you know? absolutely. Yeah, we're really happy to be here, and we're new. We're new kids on the block, so this is uh, really exciting for us to be able to join you guys. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, Gina, a.k.a. She Haunts, you know, if you're not following her, you know, links and everything are going to be in the description. You know, she is a brand and a force of her own, you know, in this in the paranormal uh, in the paranormal stratosphere, you know, so Thank make you. sure you definitely check check her out, you know, but not not uh, we, we don't just got one, you know, special person in the building today. You know, we got a Tim in the Hello, building. Today. Tim. How you feeling, Tim? How you doing? Listen, we're thanks, great. We're great. Thanks for having us. Listen, cool. man, I I know you're you're gonna be a wealth of a uh, wealth of information. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm so I'm so ex I was so excited to that you, that you were you know coming to join us tonight and you know to yeah. to share with us your experiences you. and you know your wisdom and you know every everything that comes with it. You know, thank you, thank, thank you again. Thank you so much. Oh, oh yes. Blast. Oh yes. Oh yes. And last but not least, last but not least, we got Sasha in the building. Hey, Sasha. Hey, Sasha. <laughs> I'm here. Hi. Hello. Yes. Yes. We love it. We love the energy. Love we love it. the energy. I'm excited. You know? Yes. Yes. It's uh, it's it's always fun, you know, just just having fun with people and you know talking about stuff that that we like to talk about and talking about stuff that's interesting, you know, and this. What you guys do is very interesting, you know, because some people, not a lot of people uh, are willing to go, you know, some of the places that you guys go, mm -hmm. you know, so oh, it's yeah. very, uh, it's very, it's very special, very special, you know. Um, so thank y'all. Thank y'all for joining us. Thank you. you. Know, the, thank, uh, you. thank you so yeah, much. Are. The, team, the team in the building, you know, we also have a uh, Paul Draws. Thank you for saying <laughs> goodbye, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I love the name. <laughs> Paul Drolls, thank you for stopping by. And uh, Double Feature Podcast. Hey, hey and Kira, thank y'all for stopping by. Show us some love. Show us some love, you know. But yes, we have some paranormal investigators in the building tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Like a lot of us only get to experience um, the paranormal or what we think when we get to experience the paranormal on television, you know, or sometimes, you know, through superstition you know sometimes like our our family may say something or you know mm -hmm. our you know we may experience something ourselves but to to have folks who actually are invested mm -hmm. and you know who have the equipment and who are going there you know and debunking some of the things you know debunking some of the I, I would say I don't know if it's a real word but I'm gonna say it fallacies you know uh fallacies uh in the in the in that game, in the paranormal game, you know, so it's uh, it's I'm just excited to have you guys here tonight, super excited, you know, and uh, we got you. in love with horror, hey, you know, in the building tonight, you know, thank y'all for stopping by, thank y'all for stopping by, all right, so uh, to kick it off, you know, um, how did you guys 
come together? You know, like how did, how did you guys form the Afterlife All Stars? You know, love the name, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so just a little bit about the name. So we, when we were investigating, Tim and I, um, we wanted to really kind of create a welcoming community for other like-minded individuals to be able to join. And um, the thing about the paranormal community is sometimes it's kind of hard to break into a team because, you know, the teams they form and then they, they're kind of, you know, it takes a lot to kind of get involved. And we wanted to be, you know, very accepting of everyone. So we sort of thought the all-stars were, was a good term to kind of, you know, bring a lot of people together and also a way for us to investigate with other investigators from other teams, network with other, you know, folks. And, you know, Tim actually used to be a baseball player. So it kind of fit with the all-stars being kind of like a team. And of course we explore the paranormal, the afterlife, because we're always looking for answers on that. And we got together about officially in January, but we've been like unofficially investigating for around, I would say maybe six months. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Baseball player. Yeah. Tim, like, you know, tell, tell yeah. us a little bit about that, man. You can't, we can't gloss over that. <laughs> oh, no. I was, a, I was a wrong-handed pitcher in the minor league system out of high school. I wasn't right-handed. I was the wrong-handed. So I was fun. <laughs> it was a fun time. And um, I ended up coaching a little after that and things like that. But the All Stars was Gina's brainstorm. It was incredible because we have a lot of people that we've investigated with over the years, and we just want to bring them in and have a good time. Yeah, and, you know. And there are some investigators out there that we can, you know, you can always learn from other investigators. Absolutely. So, so if we can bring them in with their talent and things like that, and there's really no, um, um. You know, commitment per se. Yeah. So we can bring teammates in from other teams and things like that to investigate with us. That was the goal of it. Yeah. We just want to be inclusive. You know, we just want people that love the paranormal to have the chance and the opportunity to be a part of that if they, if that's what they want. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So how how did you how did you you know join Sasha? Like how did you how did you you know get in, get into the game? Yeah, so that's a great story, actually. So I just moved to Florida like a year and a half ago, and I was kind of in Seattle before that, and I was just like looking around. I started getting interested in it pretty much when I moved there because it has a long and dark history, and I like the long and dark history of anything. And so I went out to this abandoned hospital that was like five hours north, and that was my first real feeling out of it. And it was like, I went with other people and, you know, sometimes that goes yay or nay. And it was really fun. And then when I moved to Florida, I was just like, I don't know if I'm going to find people to ghost hunt down here for sure. But then I realized there's so many like metaphysical people out here. And I just went on an event, Brian, and started searching and I found this group and they were holding a session at New River Inn in History Fort Lauderdale. And I was just like, um, let me go check them out. They show you how to use some even more tools that I didn't know how to use. And I was just like, this is going to be really cool. And I just kind of went with like not knowing a lot about everything, you know, just a very tiny amount. And when I went in, everything they were saying from what I've looked up and everything, it was just like, they were so welcoming, welcoming, and it felt so good. Like, everybody was so cool. And the atmosphere, it was like tense and exciting. And you just, you know, that blood racing, some people, they want to jump out of planes. I want to go ghost hunting. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you, you would think, you know, like it, it does draw a certain level of like intenseness or, you know, uh, especially, you know, dealing with different energies, you know, so it's, uh, I, can, I can definitely see how that could be a rush, you know, Do, would you mind going Go hunting one day with the gang. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. We got you. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> yeah, one day. It's live. Oh, yes. <laughs> when we in Florida, we're definitely we definitely got to check them out because it's it's recorded now. It's live. You know, it's <laughs> sold up. 
Yeah, we'll so, take you out to some I, really I, fun places. Nothing, nothing negative, you know, just all fun haunted places. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. That's what I want to be a part of. Absolutely. It it kind of was the plan from the beginning. Uh, when you started, I bought him a magazine with all these haunted places, um, throughout America and outside of America, and I was like, it would be fun to go to these places. Except I do have an exception, no caves, nothing yeah. underground, nothing. Well. Mm -hmm. But other than that, haunted houses or museums, hospitals, asylums, anything like that, I'm fine. Or prisons, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. down. So um yeah. I, I guess if I want if I get to ask all of you, um, so Gina, you did say that all of you got together and been doing these investigations for the past six months. Do you mind telling me for each of you, how long were you investigating before you formed this group? For me, I've been kind of on and off. Um, I've had, I had my first experience, I would say around high school and I was interested. I, I grew up in a house that had some, uh, some spirits attached to it. And I would say when I, was in college. I had my first, I went on my first ghost tour where I had another experience, which got me interested. But I would say more officially, because I, I bought my own equipment around 2017 and my husband bought me some and it, you know, kind of, he was trying to encourage me to get out and do more of it. So I would say probably officially since 2017, but it's, you know, I've always been interested. Wow. Love to hear it. Nice. And what about you, Tim? Oh, I'm the old man of the bunch. <laughs> I've been doing this like I never had like grandma standing at my bed, nothing like that. It's just I was a medic in Miami and I saw a lot of death over the years. So hmm. about 20, close 25 years ago, I guess 25, it's getting there. I, I started thinking there's got to be something more than throwing someone in the ground. So I just and I knew I was kind of a science geek. And I knew about the uh, physics law and energy is transferred, all that stuff. So I just started investigating on my own. So I've been doing like 20, 25 years. Um, I, I have a addiction to buying all the toys. So we have a wide array of equipment. And the cool thing is that um, when we bring people on for events and all that, they get to play with the equipment. It's not, you know, they're, they're part of the team for the night. And it's fun to watch the excitement, like, especially we get a lot of kids and a lot of kids will, uh, they know the equipment from watching the shows. They'll go, hey, man, that's a millimeter, right? I go, yeah, it's a millimeter, man. He's like, that's a rim pod. So, so over the years, the only, the only change I've seen in 25 years is the attitude of people. It used to be, you know, you're crazy. Now it's like if I walk around with my shirt on, people go, oh, you do that? Man, that's amazing. I wish I could do that or my place is active. So the whole attitude has changed, has shifted to the excitement of the whole genre. And meeting people like Gina and Sasha and other members of the team over the years, it's so cool to watch their eyes light up when we get evidence or that we're helping someone because that's what it's all about. Yes, yes, love it. Absolutely. Love it. Yeah, what about you, Sasha? Well, I haven't been as long as these professionals up in here, but <laughs> I have been a big um, horror movie fan since I was 12 years old. And so I pretty much, all the paranormal stuff never scared me. But then that one night, <laughs> but actually we, me and my friend went to see that paranormal movie, Paranormal Activity, as you know. And it was fine. Like I felt fine, but that was probably like my first weirdest experience. And I don't know if it was like both of us just like, I don't know, some weird energy in our brains going off, but we're driving down the street after the midnight showing. There's no one on the street because this is Iowa where nobody's out at night. And um, you're driving down the street and all of a sudden she just starts screaming. I'm like, what? Ah! what and she's like look at that and I'm like what and I see it too the deer right there in front of us in the middle of the road but I swear to God for a flicker of a second its head was upside down like she said it was and I don't know why but it disappeared so fast like I went back and looked and I was like it's not there and I'm like are you still spending the night right and she's like 
no. I was like, oh, okay. And so that was like my first like, uh, I don't like darkness anymore. I'm going to have all the lights on at night. Um, and then, you know, eventually started just exploring creepy places, going to graveyards here and there. I, you know, they're very comforting, but I also, especially just how beautiful they are, like going to other countries and exploring how just like gorgeous they do their mausoleums and everything. It's just beautiful. And um, when I really started ghost hunting a little bit in Seattle, so probably really like more, more on the like actual ghost hunting and not just having fun, probably seven years at most. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Awesome. Goodness. The upside that that's that's a that's a nightmare right there. Here <laughs> <laughs> with this head upside that image. down. Yeah, it's, 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 it's I know. Image. It was like a split second. I was like, what? Ah, what? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's imprinted. It's it's definitely imprinted. You know. Um, now my my next question for you guys would be, um, if you were to join a paranormal show you know, one of these paranormal investigation, you know, uh, shows on television uh, as, a, as a regular, you know, what do you think that you could, that you would bring necessarily? Because, you know, we've seen all these, you know, investigators out there. What, what do you guys think that you could bring uh, differently to the, uh, to the, to the paranormal scene? You know, it may be a little bit more, a little bit more, um, uh, I guess like truth is truthful the word, a little bit more like uh, a little bit more real, Realistic, like what would you bring valid. to the, uh, the yeah. kids would say valid. Oh, valid. <laughs> well, I think that you know it's important to show a little bit more of the whole picture because a lot of times the shows will just show you a very short amount of, let's say, they might be out on a location for three or four days and they're going to give you a 25 minute segment just showing yeah. you the highlights. So I think it might be interesting to show what else goes into that to show the honesty of the of the investigation because there is a lot of time in between those crazy moments where we're just sitting around in the dark talking to a reporter and we're not hearing anything we're listening for taps where it's it's not as intense as they project it to be on TV so i think that's important too because that's more realistic for anybody who wants to try it at home but also, I think, you know, a lot of these shows, they really get a lot of, of a rise out of spirits with using provocation. And it's very important to our team. It's paramount, you know, to our team to kind of approach everything more with kindness because this spirit resides in whatever location it's in. And just like you wouldn't want someone coming in your house and screaming and yelling, we're in their house and we have to be respectful. And we find that we get amazing evidence by just being nice and just, you know, and not asking questions that are intrusive, like how do you, how did you die? You know, it's a very personal question. That's probably one of the most personal things about a person. And they might not want to share it with Bob that just walked in the door. And, you know, so it's, I think kindness and also honesty is important for a televised show. Yes, yep. yes, love it, love it. What, love what about you, Tim? I thought I was going to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I've been giving lectures for 12, 15 years, and that's always my main goal of the lecture, that you run an honest investigation. And um, because, you know, we, we do private and businesses and places like that. And if you run an honest investigation and you're proficient with your tools, even if you don't get anything, the client has a better understanding that you did everything you could. You're willing to come back, but you did everything you could to get answers for them. And like when I sit down with clients, I tell them right off the bat, I go, now there's no guarantee we'll catch anything. And if we don't, we just, you keep a log for a week and we come back. We come back to the time you're experiencing things. But for me, the biggest, my biggest, uh, goal is to have people uh, people learn how to use the tools proficiently so the, the client has more confidence in your evidence and just be honest with your evidence. If you didn't get nothing, you didn't get nothing. You know, and most of the times the clients will respect that, you know, you, you know what you're doing. Apparently it just didn't happen that night. 
So yeah, I would, I would, I thought I was getting in trouble for saying honesty, but yeah, my biggest pet peeve is honesty. <laughs> no, um, I, I love it. I love it. You know, it, and it makes, it makes sense. It makes sense. Absolutely. What, what about you, Sasha? Well, I mean, both of them just had such great answers, taking all the stuff from me, but that's all good. It's all good. I personally, I bring a little level of fun. So if you are nervous or if you ever feel uncomfortable, like I want every person always to feel comfortable. Like that's always my goal in just life if you're around me. And so same with the spirits, right? Like we want to make each one of them. And if everybody, if someone comes in nervous and feeling a little weary, we come over and be like, hey, how are you doing? Like, how's your day? Like, let's talk about life for a minute. And then we'll go into it and just be like, look at this. Like, see how fun we have? Like, we'll joke. I'll just make some jokes here and there. And honestly, then people laugh and it kind of lightens that mood a little bit. And sometimes, honestly, the spirits are like, hey, um, I kind of want to have fun too. Let me join in there. Hello, flashlight, see me. <laughs> that's, that's important. But also just being kind. That's really true. Like, coming to this group and just seeing how other groups are, especially on television shows and stuff. I really do think like that, just being there and understanding saying, thank you. We appreciate how much energy you're putting into this. We know it can take a lot because we don't know across that veil, how hard it really is taking for them to press that bell or make that music box go off. Or if someone's trying to stop them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, yes. I'm just going to say Sasha's attitude is important because even if your EVP sessions start to wane, you just talk amongst yourself. Just have a good time. Just talk amongst the investigators. And sometimes we'll get responses like, hey, that looks like you're having a good time. I want to join in. Then we start getting some EVP responses. But it's always your attitude. Like I walk in every room at, at the beginning of the night, I go, or a place I've been to a hundred times. I go, hey guys, I'm back. How you doing tonight? What's going on? Just be nice, because it's you know they're gonna they're gonna make a contact with the nice person rather than the jerk who comes back. You know, so the uh, Sasha and Gina's attitude is always upbeat and it's important. It really is important to make the contact. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's important, and we're we're both heavy on energy. So I think you know, energy is a it's everything yeah. and it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you you can't avoid it no matter what. And you also have to be careful with it, with yours and anybody else's around you, uh, even rooms. Um, so yeah, I, I a thousand percent agree. Um, and even with that being said, with the investigations that all of you conduct, do you mind telling us uh, about the equipment that you all have? Uh, I guess we could start with Sasha first since... <laughs> 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 oh well you know i don't have as big of a tool set as tim over here he's you know the top dog up in this but it's all good um eventually i'll have a giant case as well um but i <laughs> i started with like just kind of the flashlight you know mm -hmm. that was like what i was seeing first and that's, honestly it really does get a lot and I'm not gonna lie, I got some hearing issues sometimes, or it's just selective, I don't know, cause I can't hear as much as like sometimes or I have to really focus. But when you're in an SD session that you are focusing all the way, you got headphones on like YouTube right now, you know, except you're blindfolded. Yeah. So hey, what is an SD session? It's very exciting. So you have headphones on that are noise canceling and you blindfold so you can't read people's lips. So you're in a room with people and you're going to be connected to um, either an S box, which is what I have, which is a spirit box. It's how you'll communicate through AM and FM frequency, like white noise. And so you're going to be in this space where you're just going to be feeling all the energy and no one else is going to be able to like mess with it. And we'll be asking questions like, is there anyone here with us? How old are you? What is your name? Have you been here for a long time? Whatever it is. And as we're asking these questions in a very like soft voice, just because, you know, people get excited and you can still yell. Right. Um, you'll just be saying whatever you hear. And that can be the letter, you know, a letter. It can be a number. It could be a few sentences or just a small amount. But that's what got me even more excited when I learned that this team was going to be doing those sessions as well. And I got to fully experience that 
feeling of energy, you know, because the flashlight going off is exciting and, you know, seeing it respond to your questions is really cool. But when you could hear what they're saying and really like feel it almost, the vibration, it's, it's a lot more powerful. It makes you even believe more if you don't. Wow. Wow, goodness. Wow. Yes, yes. What, what about you, Tim? Which, oh. what are... <laughs> He's got I have that. a bunch. <laughs> but I always <laughs> tell people, like when we do presentations and lectures, I lay all this stuff out. And I go, the first rule is don't mortgage the house. <laughs> Because actually part of the lecture is how to get a baseline kit where you can just get started for, you know, minimal dollars. Because some of the equipment we have is like crazy money. And it's just, I always, when I lay it out, I go, now this is 20 years of collecting. This isn't like I cashed my paycheck last week and went to ghost stop and just bought them out. But I have, um, you know, I have the Kinect cameras, the yet the stick and dot figure cameras. Um, we have a very special portal that we use, Devin's box that everybody loves. Uh, a gentleman made and I tested it years ago and it's like a rock star. So we uh, we had a lot of stuff on it. And it's the only one that's uh, that's been made. So we're kind of special about that. Oh, wow. And nice. Then I, and I just created recently some I called a hob, haunted object box where I created a box that's like can fit a doll. If people like we have a there's a doll at a location we do that that we've gotten voice you know EVPs with using it, uh rim pods gone off, things like that. So the idea of the box is it's surrounded by Faraday cloth which shields any EMF from coming in. So we can put a haunted object in there, a suspected haunted object with um you know, there's enough room in there for K meters, mil meters, rims, all that stuff. And if something goes off, it's nothing from the outside affecting it. It's it has to be coming from the inside. There's no EMF coming in, and it's it's uh, sealed, so there's no way a draft can come in and change the temperature, like on a rim pod. So we just started using that. So we're pretty excited to start running experiments on that. See what okay. we get. So, so yeah. the year you've been in it so long that you've, you know, throughout the years you've created your own devices. You know? Some stuff. I mean, I do a lot of testing for guys. Some guys will send me like the Devon's box I spoke about. The gentleman asked me to test it, but I paid him for cost of it. Okay. And um, it's a it's uh, Gina is the queen of reels, so she puts a lot of stuff on our Instagram after I have followed stars of the Devon's box portal. So we get it, it, we get a lot of cool stuff with it. And we have some other experiments that we're, we're uh, putting together. We're going to start doing, you know, uh, with frequencies, um, how the equipment uh, responds if, if, if there's a delay in the response, things like that. So we got about, I got like 10 or 12 written down already experiments we're going to be working on. So yeah. be on the lookout. Yes, yes. Exciting. Excited. Excited. What about you, Gina? So equipment wise, I I love equipment. Uh, I if you've ever been on my Instagram page, I am always buying new equipment. And partially the reason for that is because I am just one of those people that one just one, you know, proof of evidence is not enough. I want a multifaceted uh, mm -hmm. approach to capturing evidence. So if I feel a draft and there, I'm in a room with no AC on and there's no open window, no open doors, you know, we're going to use a temperature gun. We're going to use an EMF reader. We're going to see if we can capture a voice right afterwards. I want to have multi points of proof. So I do like to collect evidence by using a lot of different devices. However, I have written a few articles, and I'm, I'm a writer for a magazine called Paranormality Magazine. I also run a, a, a blog, and there, you like Tim said, you don't need to break the bank to get started with paranormal investigation. In fact, you can buy, you know, maybe three or four different items for under twenty dollars each on Amazon and get incredible results. And mm -hmm. I think it's important that people understand that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars to, to get amazing evidence and to get started in the field. So, you know, I would say I love 
my recorder. I love my portal box. I love, you know, having those tools, but a flashlight, like Sasha mentioned a couple times, we've been getting incredible results by just using a simple mag light flashlight. All you have to do is unscrew the top so that it's barely touching the battery. And, you know, if, if it just takes a simple twist, it will turn on. And by doing that in certain locations, we've been getting very intelligent responses, yes or no responses by turning the flashlight on and off. And it's $20. And it's something that you have visual proof that no one's touching it. And there's no remote control. There's no, you know, it's a very controlled situation. So that to me, I think is interesting. So I would say it's good to have a balance. You know, if you want to get involved in collecting gear, go for it. But if you want to do it on a budget, you can certainly do it on a budget just fine. And I think that's cool that there's that dichotomy of it, you know. And I think for, you know, anyone out there that's interested in getting started, I know myself, you know, partially the reason that held me back for so long was going, oh, wow, they have all of those, you know, those items in their toolbox. What am I going to, you know, how can I possibly get ghost hunting without all of that stuff? And you don't really need it all. So it's, Mm -hmm. it's a good thing to do, you know, just get started. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess it does make sense because when you do have a paranormal experience, you know, it's your average person, you know, you know, nine times out of 10, you don't have the tools around you. You just you just have that experience. So, you know, you're going to I feel like in general, human beings, we don't know how sensitive we are. Like we don't know just how everybody's uh, sensitive to a certain level and just how it may affect, you know, uh, certain people. You know, Yeah, it's just I always tell people if you just like. When I wanted to start investigating, I kind of let myself go to the possibility. And then I started I started actually experiencing stuff, like my hair got curled once in a morgue at a hospital I worked at. I heard my name a couple of times. So once you let yourself go to the possibility, now some people might convince that, confuse that with I'm leaving myself open to attachment. No, you're just you're just going with, you know, um, they might be here. So they're like, they might be on the other side going, you know, that guy might actually believe we're enough that we can make, maybe make a contact. So yeah, it, it, your, your biggest tool is your body. I mean, you know, if you feel your hair standing up, that's static. If you feel a cold spot, if you feel a pressure change, it's a barometric pressure. You can use your body for a lot of stuff. You know, you don't need to break the bank. <laughs> I, I've done that, so uh, you don't need to. It takes a long time. To, it takes a long time to pack up. So it's, uh, yes, but it's cool. Yeah. I mean, the stuff we use. You know, we we actually. I mean, all the whole team has a lot of stuff. It, I mean, they're 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 getting into it. So we have a lot of REM pods, melts where we can lay them in different rooms, and if something's happening in another room, you know, something's there where we go. Oh, it might have moved here. So it's good to have a lot of equipment just for that. So you can kind of spread it out and see if the activity is moving around. But you don't need it. I mean, you know, you could start tomorrow. You can go to a hotel tomorrow and, you know, bring a compass, a flashlight, and uh, your phone. And you can start. You don't need all that other stuff. It's fun to have, but you don't need it to start. Well, yeah, that's, that's good to know. But you'll get it. You'll get into it. You'll start buying it. That's just a, that's the way it is. But yeah, you don't I, need I, it to start. Yeah, I need to get my own setup. You know, especially now that we we live in a school now, so it's uh, it, it used to be a school. It used to be. Wow. It used to be a high school. Um, but okay. when I'm here alone, I hear the, all different types of noises. But I just assume that it's the neighbors. Uh, This is also a pet friendly place. So sometimes we'll hear barking, Um, but then there are noises that I can't explain. And I just, I just, I don't know. I do certain things. Like uh, if there's a mirror facing me, I have to close the door. (laughs) Like, I'm like, let me close this uh, just in case. Cause I just heard a noise or I just saw something and I just ignore it. I ignore it. I'm like, stop, leave me, please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. It's gonna, it's you're scaring me. Please leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, if you reckon sometimes if you recognize them at lay ground rules, don't yell at them. Just say, mm-hmm. listen, I know you're here. You know, leave my kids alone. Or let me get oh, some yeah. sleep tonight. 
don't don't provoke them. You mm-hmm. know, just saying, just it's your house. If you're comfortable doing that, you know, some people I can't do that. Well, you know, if you're comfortable doing, it, just lay down some ground rules for your place. Yeah, and usually they nice. they will they'll behave. Yeah, because I, I I can dig that. I start sweating, so I feel like <laughs> if I start, you know, just if I get if I say it with my chest, like, hey, you know, I'm <laughs> hey, I'm watching Batman right now, you know, can I watch in peace, you know. Um, so I actually do want to know. Um, well, first we're gonna check the comment section. We got some guests coming in. Oh yeah, we got a double feature, you know, podcast, which is a which is something you wanted to know as well. Yes. How do you all protect yourselves from bringing anything home with you, and do you have to worry about that? It's a great question. Yes. Um, well, I I recently had an experience where I'm not sure if I had an attachment or not, but I did take some precautions. Uh, we were investigating a regular spot, and there was a rotating exhibit. So it, it was in our in the museum that we'd investigate at, and a few of us had some very odd experiences in this room with these new objects. And you know, when I when I went home, I had a very 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 strange dream where I woke up in my bed and I, I had this feeling that someone was in the room. So I was looking around the room, you know, very vivid dream. And I look over behind, you know, the side of my bed where my husband's sleeping. And I see a man kind of crouch down like he's hiding and he was just covered in sweat. He was very clear. I could see every, you know, the color of his eyes. I could see his shirt. I could see all of his features and clear as day. And, but I couldn't say anything. I couldn't say, get out. Or I couldn't, you know, yell at him because, you know, in dreams, sometimes you just can't do those things. And I woke up from this dream and I immediately smelled what smelled like a little, like a whiff went by me of, of body odor, which I know that sounds kind of gross. And you might automatically think, okay, did you check yourself? Did you check your husband? <laughs> I did. I did do that. And we had both recently showered. Our bed was, you know, everything was clean. And it wasn't either of us. And as soon as I smelled it, it was gone. It was just like immediately gone. And I, of course, am freaking out. I'm not going back to sleep at this point. My heart is beating out of my chest. I'm checking my whole house to see if I smell anything. And I don't. So it was very odd because, you know, that night we had some weird feelings in this space. And we got some creepy voices on our recorders. And then I had that dream. And then immediately when I was awake, I smelled what smelled like a person that needed to take a shower. And mm. I landed up staging my house and I haven't thankfully had anything happen since, but I do chalk that up to if it was an attachment, I don't think it was anything menacing. I don't think it was anything negative. I think it might've just been somebody who's confused and maybe they didn't know where they were because these objects were on display for a short period of time. So maybe they were just confused why they were in this space and they followed me out. Um, but I would say that all of us or, or most of us wear, you know, protection jewelry, like black tourmaline. Um, you can say prayers. You can also say things like you're not welcome to follow me home. You can use mm-hmm. sage. You can use Florida water. There's all kinds of precautions that you can take. And sometimes even with doing all that, I had that experience, which again, I'm not sure if it was definitely an attachment, but it felt very off for me. And it just, there was too many things that lined up for me to brush it off. So I did take the precaution to, to cleanse my home, which is not really a bad idea to do at any time, really, because by saging your house, even once a month, it's not only going to clear any negative energy, but there's actually some science behind the fact that burning sage actually kills bacteria. So, you know, if somebody's sick or you're, you know, whatever reason, it's just good to do every once in a while. So just to be safe, I recommend it. Yes, yes. Yeah, I know we, we need some new sage actually. <laughs> yeah, we we had big old um white sage, red, what was it, the dragon's blood sage? Yeah. We we had those Palo mm-hmm. Santo all through here. Uh, well, Palo Santo. That's one of my favorites. That smells so good. Yes. Oh yes, oh yes. What about you, Sasha? Oh, I mean Gina Gina kind of definitely laid it all out there. Pretty much, you know, you can wear any protective crystal jewelry, like do your research, make sure you look into it. Definitely you have to set an intention. You have to cleanse them ahead of time. 
But I have also heard from Alexis, one of our other team members, that sometimes it can also prohibit you from hearing or feeling things too if it's too powerful of a protective stone. Ooh. So definitely be careful with that as well. But if you're looking for that, then that's good too. So there's that as well. I am the type that just goes, you can't come home with me as much as like we'd have fun. You got to stay here. I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much uh, that pretty much works for me yeah it's great i have not had any of those um you know shadow people or feeling of um you know par paralysis or dreams of that intensity yet but who knows the more you open yourself the more you feel things the more there's that possibility there mm, okay okay i like that i like that what, what about you tim oh i'm I'm just, it's funny when I leave, my wife never comes. She's very supportive of my son. And they're like, have fun. Don't bring nothing home. <laughs> so, so over the years, I've always just, I just simply say, you can't come home with me. You're not going to be welcome. And besides, you'll be miserable because we have a happy home. So I've told invest, no, investigators over the years, they go, try to take care of your own attitude in your, your house. Try to have a, because I, I had a partner once, him and his wife were going through financial problems for like a year and always arguing. And suddenly he said, Tim, everything's coming home to me. I go, yeah, you guys are always screaming at each other, man. They're happy. So I just tell him, no, you can't come home. You'll, you know, we're happy. You're going to be miserable. And I've, I guess, been fortunate. I've, I've done some really ratty places and I, nothing's ever come home with me. So thank good for that, man. I'm like... <laughs> I always tell my son, I'll bring it home and put it in your room. No, no, don't do that, Daddy. I'm not <laughs> your kids need friends, right? Yeah. <laughs> bring them up. Friendly Casper. Yeah. So, I mean, just come with a good attitude. Thank them for their time. And when you leave, say, you know, we'll see you next time. And, you know, we'll come back and talk to you. Because we do a lot of places over and over and over. So we've made a lot of contacts with these uh, spirits in different places. Okay. Some connections. Yes, yes. And I can see, like, especially if you're going to a place multiple times, like you feel like, you know, they the spirits feel like, okay, well, you know, they're cool. They're not here to be invasive. They're not here to be intrusive. Yeah. So, you know, we don't we don't have to go to the extreme, you know. I mean, we, we get one guy says the F word a lot, but it, you know, he's never hurt anybody. He's, that's just the way he talks. It's like, how you yeah. doing, friend? And he'll you know the recording will be F you. All right, Frank, you're having a good day, you know, or we have a, a little girl says hello all the time and things like that. So, but you got to be nice. That's like Gina and Sasha were saying, if you come in with a good attitude, you know, they're going to come there. It's like a, it's like me and you, you know, if, if I'm an idiot, you see me walking into a party, you're going to go the other way. Like, oh my God, there's Tim, you know, <laughs> but if you're a goof off, oh God, there's Tim. See what's on his mind. Cause it's usually warped. <laughs> you, know, just, you know, be nice, you know, be nice. And we get a lot of evidence being nice. You don't have to provoke. Yes. They say you catch more flies with a, uh, what is it? A uh, sugar honey. than sugar than yeah. honey, honey. Honey. Yeah. Yeah. Honey. <laughs> yeah. Honey. Yeah. Honey. Yeah. Honey. Yeah. Honey. Yeah. Honey. I don't even eat it. And I know that's all good. <laughs> You know, uh, we got another question uh, from the chat from uh, Kira. Have you guys seen the show Fear or Stranded? A group of random regular people sent to explore haunted places. Fear provided a cash prize for those brave enough to compete. Many didn't. Hmm. I have not seen. I have not yeah. seen Fear yeah. or Stranded. Gotta get yeah, that we'll check that out. Yeah, yeah. I've got to get that on my list. Got to get that on my list. <laughs> Yeah. So I do want to know, uh, how do you document? Like, how do you document and collect evidence during the investigations? Usually through video. And we ha also have the recorders, which we can play back and also enhance with computer software so that we can clean them up a bit and see if we can eliminate any extra noise, you know, on the recording to, to hear any voices more clearly. But I would say 90% of it is video because 
if you have a flashlight that goes on and off by itself, having that on video is better than just me telling you it happened. And mm -hmm. also the most of the spirit boxes, not all of them, but most of them, you have to kind of just record it and listen back to it and see if you hear anything. Some of the spirit boxes will have an option for a, a uh, SIM card, like a little uh, card that you can put in your computer, but not everyone does that. But I would say, you know, the, the most important thing is to always be rolling. And, and that's where, you know, I don't know if you guys seen that show. It's called Paranormal Caught on Camera. It's yes. really fun. I love that show. And really what it is now, you know, the, the further we are along with our technology is everyone has a camera in their pocket. Everyone has a ring cam on their doorway. Um, everyone has all this security footage in their house to watch over their kids or their pets or whatever. And we're catching more and more evidence via video more now than ever before. So if you have your camera rolling, you're, you know, you're more likely to capture evidence. And also, you know, I had years ago just strolling through a cemetery in, in Salem. I was just doing a video of the cemetery. I'm going, wow, this is so cool. I love the cemetery. And I had my little K2 meter and it was going nuts. And I was filming that and going, ooh, I wonder if it's haunted. And one of my friends who happens to be an audio engineer, he contacted me and said, Gina, you're not going to believe this, but I watched your video and I hooked up my, you know, I hooked up the video to my software and I heard a voice in your video. He said, there's a man that's, you know, you're walking around the, the graves and you're using your K2 meter, which is, you know, measuring EMF. And I heard a man's voice say, I'll escort you. And this was a cemetery that was primarily from American revolutionary soldiers. And that would be a time period correct statement for a man to make to a woman. I'll escort you. You know, you're here alone. I'll, I'll bring you to where you need to go. And, you know, I never, I just caught that on my cell phone. And I was just making a silly video for Instagram and there was a voice on there. So I just think that if you're able to on any investigation or ghost tour, or if you're just staying at a haunted, you know, inn or hotel, if you have that camera rolling, you might just capture, you know, something really interesting that you didn't expect. Yeah. And it's cool because it's, it should be for all investigators to have a good habit. If you catch a decent EVP play it right into a video. Is that when you have a backup right away? And we've done that for years. And we get, I check this, oh my God, listen, play it into a, even a camera phone, as long as you got your backup. Because you never know, you might hit the wrong button and erase it. So, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, so it's always good to have the uh, the videos running just for backup of, of evidence from other devices. Yes, yes. That's smart. That's a smart tip. You know, always be recording because you think you think you're, especially when you're, around it you're you can always catch something no matter where you're at you know? yeah. so, in such so so often oh it just so often happens that we don't catch something i mean gosh yes the literally last weekend we were like exploring and i see tim leave the room when we're in this little girl's room and i turned off my camera because i was like okay i'm just gonna they got this for a minute i'm just gonna i was like oh and then i looked over and i'm like did he did he move that little doll in the rocking chair? Or is that is that moving by itself? So I followed him into the hallway and said, did you accidentally run into that when you walked out? And he's like, I don't remember running into that. I'm pretty sure I didn't. And I'm like, of course, turned off my camera right when that happened. Could have just turned around and looked right at it and been like, and of course, when we walked back in the room, it stopped. And I, I tested it a little bit. I pushed that rocking chair a little. It would have probably been still going a little bit if I would have turned back around after talking to Tim because it had a little extra. It, didn't, it wasn't one of those. It just stops. So that's what I mean. Or flashlights going off and then they turn off quickly because it'll be up to you know the spirit how quickly or how slowly it wants to turn things off or can. And you might just be like, oh, I'm not getting anything. Turn off. Oh. You son of a thing. <laughs> All right, then. But sometimes they want to talk to you not doing that. I mean, I've seen TikTok videos where that's all someone will do is they'll just talk to the spirit in their room with just their phone camera and a flashlight. And they'll be like, there's this one girl that's just like, hey, you want to take shots with me, Chad? They'll turn on the flashlight. She's like, all right, we're taking shots with Chad. And I was like, <laughs> oh, all right, this is interesting. Okay, I'm into it. <laughs> 
Wow. <laughs> and I, and I said, you brought a different perspective for me in my brain because I'm like, you know, we watch so many things and uh, people are talking to spirits and then all of a sudden something automatically happens. But it's like, yeah. no, like you don't know. We don't know how much energy they're exerting, you know, in order mm -hmm. to make a make a light flicker or, you know, to move something or to say something. So, you know, we have to patience, patience in the field, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, can any of you tell me uh, any type of compelling evidence that you've collected in the past? Like, what was the most like memorable evidence that you've collected? Well, I mean, actually, I didn't get it. it. Was I was on a tour, doing a tour, and a, a lady shot in two trains. Lights were on between two cars. She come running out and she goes, Tim, look at this. And it was her camera phone and it was a pure black apparition, shadow person, a shadow person standing there. And she got her camera phone. But I mean, over the years, I've caught shadows running around. Uh, I've actually called a Native American EVP uh, that I had to take to the Seminole chief to see if it was Seminole. So the stuff we caught over the years has just been amazing. You know, but the shadow, he's... It, you know, I still have that picture, and it, it, it impresses people when they see it all the time. Like, oh my god! I go, yep, that was done with a camera phone too. Wow! I gotta see that. I gotta see it. <laughs> I'll send it to you. That's yes. a pretty cool picture. Thank you. And what about you, Sasha? Oh wow! I mean, there was this one. Uh, so the doll that Tim talked about earlier that was in his box that he made. Um, it is a nun doll. I don't remember what year period it was from. You, you would have to remind me, Tim or Gina. I think but it's like um, 1910, okay, something like that. Yeah, and its eyes. Let me tell you, when you look into its eyes, you already sense this just like eeriness. Like you're not sure what it is for sure, but you know, you also don't feel like scared. It's just like the unknown. But there's something there that's like making you. Hmm. And so we did a recording, uh, Gina, Alexis and Tim, we had like three or four recorders and we were talking to it. And the first thing that Gina asked was, can I say the Lord's prayer? And then a few other questions leading to that. After we were done, one of the recorders didn't really get anything. Another one, eh, a little bit here. And then another one, all of a sudden, <laughs> Yes, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh my God. And they were like, you want to listen again? Yes. And let me record this real fast. Cause oh my God. I was like, why is none of the other recorders recording this? And so it's like you sometimes having more than one recorder too. Cause think about it. You might just be thinking, oh, well, I didn't get anything. Well, maybe it's cause you didn't have enough devices. Yeah. Mm. But you could do that with phones too. It doesn't have to be a digital recorder. Yeah. It just, for some reason, some devices will pick it up, but not on, not on others. Yeah. Wow. wow. And, and what about you, Gina? What was the most compelling evidence you came across? So this is hard for me because I'm, I, I love, I'm always rolling. I would say one of the most interesting, my only ghost photo that I've ever captured was Funny enough, I was in St. Augustine, which is my, one of my favorite cities, and it's one of the most haunted cities in the country, in Florida, and I go pretty often. And on this particular trip, I was not there, you know, for fun. It wasn't a vacation. It was one of my closest friends' bachelorette parties. So I was there completely for a different reason, and, you know, it was a bunch of girls, and we had rented a house. And one of the other girls, not me, because I wasn't going to be the one to suggest going on a walking ghost tour because I don't want, I'm always the creepy one, you know. So one of the other girls suggested it. And I was, of course, very excited to join. And we just did a walking tour of the various sites, you know, the Castillo de San Marco, which is the big fort. We walked around the gates. We walked over towards the Huguenot Cemetery. Now, when you're ever taking pictures in any capacity, it's always good to take multiple photos, you know, almost like a burst essentially, because you might capture something manifesting in one, you might capture the full manifestation in another, and then it's gone in the last. 
it's just always a good rule to do that when you're taking pictures. So when I'm walking around, I'm just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, taking pictures. And I never expected to find anything. I initially didn't notice anything in my photos. You know, we finished off the weekend. It was a great time. And on the ride home, I was bored in the backseat because thankfully I wasn't driving home. And I was sitting and I was just pinching and zooming into my photos that I took outside of the Huguenot Cemetery, which is one of the oldest cemeteries. And I was pretty shocked when I discovered there was in one photo, clear as day, a man and a woman. Clear as day. The man is kind of, he's kind of hefty. He's got a beard. He's got a top hat. He has what looks like kind of like a frilly, like ascot situation with a suit. The woman that's standing next to him is wearing this old timey looking kind of like, I don't know, like a linen dress with like a little linen bonnet. And in the first picture, they're standing behind some graves and they're looking over. Both of them are looking in the same direction. And in the second picture, they're moving away. So they're like step, took a step back. And in the third picture, they're completely gone. And you can see on an iPhone the timestamp of when that picture was taken. And they were taken in rapid succession. And you can actually see the movement of the figures, you know, looking forward, stepping back, gone. And I, of course, you know, was, was, was pretty shocked by that because I've never captured anything like that on as many investigations I've ever been on, and let, let alone I'm on a bachelorette walking tour. Uh, so it was interesting for me. But, you know, I think what's important to note in any location is you really have to look through the photos, and if you're on a phone and you can pinch and zoom and look at all those little you know, nooks and crannies, you might find something that you didn't expect. And that goes for cemeteries at night or during the day, any sort of haunted location at night or during the day. You might see you know, in reflections on windows. I've seen some photos posted of, of full apparitions in windows looking out. So you know, people are catching these things, and you don't need a fancy camera to do it. So I think that's pretty neat. And I, if you want to see my photos, I have them on my page. If anybody's curious, to check. Yes, yes, yes. A wealth, a wealth of, uh, of photos <laughs> and spooky videos and dolls. You <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoy the reels, Gina. Like whenever one of your videos come up, I stop what I'm doing. I have to watch it because it's so interesting to hear any type of voice coming through or even the static or just to see how these tools work. Uh, how you're utilizing them during the investigations. I just, I love it all. I just have to stop and watch the videos. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yes, yes. We also, we have another question from a double feature podcast. Mm -hmm. How do you select locations? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Good question. Well, we have monthly meetings where we all talk about it actually. And we come and discuss like, you know, any new tools that we are going to use. And then if anyone has any ideas that we would, and what times and dates that we're able to all make it. And so it's kind of great. It's all on Discord. We come on there and video chat and talk. It's really like easy. It's just like actually very effortless, I think, because Gina and Tim and everybody is so amazing at what we do, honestly. Like we're all very good at scheduling and time management, honestly. Yes, yes, I love it. This the group has to function well, you know, yeah. it has to be a well oiled engine, you know, to 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 accomplish everything. And to bounce yeah. off that question, you know, um, how like if you if if money wasn't an object, you know, because traveling to these places is, you know, of course everybody wishes they could go everywhere and you know, everywhere all at once, but uh if money was no object and you know, you had your dream investigation spot, which would be each of your dream investigation oh, you know spot. thank you thank you start start off with you gina okay so this always this answer will always change unfortunately because i i'm one of those like i have a squirrel brain where i'm like ooh, that looks cool that looks cool that looks cool but i think i want to say about a year ago i learned about a location in the uk known as chillingham castle and it is a wild 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 history of you know, there has been so many different people that have lived in that castle. There was many, many people tortured in that castle. At one point, it was occupied by the Nazis. There's incredible, incredible 
dark and light happening in that in that castle. And there's just so many ghost stories. They're, they have a lady in white. They have a lady in gray. They have, you know, uh, haunt, haunted children and, you know, and all these, you know, ghost children. And I, it's always been on my radar, but I want to say that it's the place I really want to go to because I'm putting it out in the universe because I may or may not be going to the UK this summer. And if I go to the UK and the stars align and I'm able to go out to this middle of nowhere castle, I want to investigate it because it just seems unreal. The amount of history and also evidence captured there, you know, there's incredible amount of sightings of these full bodied apparitions and you know, the list goes on of all the crazy stories of just, you know, spookiness. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. That's my number one right now. Wow. Okay. The UK. Yeah. I like it. I like it. You know, I like it. What, what about you, Tim? Oh, I'm closer to home. <laughs> um, I've always wanted to just go to Myrtle's up in uh, Louisiana. It's always been like my bucket list place. It's a mm. Civil War. They've actually caught an apparition of the um, woman slave who was hung there. Mm. So that place is just, and you can just, you know, rent the room and just investigate. That would be like a week of investigations. Wow. Wow. I'd have to drive though to bring all my stuff. So, you, know. <laughs> yeah, you can't carry all that on the plane. No. No. It, has, it has too many questions. <laughs> They would flag you at TSA for sure. They'd be like, what are you doing with all this? Why is this bear talking? Oh, well, let me tell you. you know. Did someone tell so, you yeah. recently? Yeah. It's a haunted bear. Now, do you want to look at it? No, go ahead, sir. You're fine. You're cool. <laughs> what about you, Sasha? What would be your uh, your dream uh, you know, uh, location? Well, that's hard because I did not prepare for this question. <laughs> <laughs> I will be honest with you. I actually, um, I'm a very detail oriented person. So I like to write lists of places, but okay. since moving here, I kind of mainly wrote a list of all of the Florida places that I've wanted to see so far. And I have about, I don't know, 40 or maybe 50 that I haven't yet even discovered here. So I think I, if I had all the money in the world, let me discover it here first, then I'll go to all those other countries and places. But there's so many, like I've just seen like all over the place. So if you just do your research, especially Atlas Obscura is a really good website to see a lot of those places. Um, and there's, oh my God, like there's domes here that are in the middle of the water that an architecture like architecture person, you know, that guy uh, <laughs> who built these domes and they say that they're supposedly haunted, but you would have to swim out to them or Robert the doll, like our own Annabelle right here in Florida. Mm. Yeah, that's mm. on my list too. <laughs> yeah, Robert the doll. I just uh, favorited the documentary. It was on some Max. It's one, yeah, something, yeah. <laughs> Check it out. Check You're like, it out. yeah, I love dolls. So fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think you'd like my house on Halloween because last year I uh, painted about like 15, 20 dolls and made them all look creepy. One of them was like a Ouija board. Most of them said, I'll kill you. You know, demonic stuff. Just cute and adorable. <laughs> scare my friends. <laughs> Listen, that's that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's all about being creepy and uh, just having fun, having fun and scaring yeah. the folks, scaring mm -hmm. the folks. You know, we got a got Heidi in the building here to support my hey. awesome Afterlife All Stars. Yes. Yes. Hello, Heidi. Hello, Heidi. You know, and that's another question I had for you guys. Uh, it's uh, majority, you know, from what I've seen, majority woman you know, uh, team. So how, how does it feel? You know, cause a lot of times when I'm watching television, it's a lot of men out there, you know, and nothing wrong with men. I'm a man, but you know, <laughs> it, I, I do notice that when it's up on the screen, women are portrayed a certain way and things like that. And there are certain yeah. stereotypes and things like that. So how does, how does it uh, feel to bring that, that representation, you know, in, in your crew? You know? Well, I think we try to just be as authentic as we can and, you know, I think when I first started with the paranormal, I also only saw, you know, male investigators on TV. 
And when I started actually getting involved in investigations and meeting other investigators, kind of connecting, networking, it's incredible the amount of female investigators that are out there. And we actually experience on many of our uh, public tours that we do and investigations that a lot of females are interested in the paranormal. So I think there's just certain things that are being portrayed on TV that, are, that follow certain narratives. And mm -hmm. I think the real world of paranormal is definitely, you know, it's more female than people assume. And yeah. I think it's really, you know, it's a nice thing because I think it's good to have, you know, both on the team because if you're in a, in a, in a location that, you know, is primarily, you know, female spirits or children's spirits, maybe they might be more inclined or feel more comfortable, you know, going up to a man or a woman based on maybe their relationships they had with their adults in their life. And we'll get response. Some, sometimes the, the, the males will be the only ones that get the responses. Sometimes the females will be the only ones that get the responses. So it's good to have both, but I think that definitely we're, you know, we're slowly kind of paving our way forward as, as a whole in the field. And I'm just proud to be a part of a team with so many strong female investigators. Yes. yes. Happy Women's History Month. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. So how, how how do you feel about that, Sasha? You know, just just repping repping for the women, you know, hard in the paranormal game. Oh yes, I love it. I mean, I just feel like I did always see a lot of guys, and when you watch paranormal movies, I'm like, why why are these like women seeming like they don't know what they're doing, or just like, ah, oh my god, I'm like, <laughs> ah, who does that? No, we none of us do that. If anything, <laughs> like, what was that? Did you hear that? Ooh. you know like it's like hey we're more inquisitive half the time i see way more women bring men to the thing to to the thing to our ghost hunt and <laughs> and usually the men are the ones shaking in their boots a little yeah. bit more let's just say i'm trying to entice them more often to do a session estes or the rods or anything and women will be like oh my god yes let's do this where the guys are like hey you want to do this um, uh, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll let her take the lead. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, so it's good, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it it's makes true. you feel very powerful. Well, yes. I've been doing, I've been doing events for 12, 15 years at least. And it's usually the husbands get dragged to them. <laughs> it's the wives who come. <laughs> well, I've had two experiences where one place, there's a, a seller I used to do called, during a state, and women always got touched on the back of their knee at this one table. So this one night, the husband's over in the corner having a husband moment, you know, graping and moaning about being there. It's all garbage. Then his wife got touched, and she said, she's, I just got touched. So then the husband started mocking her. Yeah, you got touched. That's BS. Blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, he bolted upstairs. And I heard the door blow open at the top of the stairs. And I I asked uh, the lady with me, I said, watch the group. I'm going to check on him. He was outside trembling. I go, what's wrong with you, man? He goes, I got touched. I go, see, don't mock your wife, dude. They, they cover each other, in the, even in the afterlife. And I've had that happen a couple of times where husbands have gotten touched after mocking their wives. But um, <laughs> so karmic. <laughs> Yeah, it's so cool. It's like, you know, one guy almost broke the window out of a door trying to open it. The doorknob. Oh. So I open it up and I go, what's wrong? He goes, I got touched. I go, see, dude, uh, you know, <laughs> make fun of your wife. Pay the price, man. But, you know, even even when we have guests, I always ask the women to ask questions if they're comfortable with it. Because some, you know, I think women are more nurturing and stuff. And the, whatever is there might feel more comfortable speaking to a woman and they're yeah. probably sick of hearing my voice after 10 or 12 years so they're like oh my god yes let's talk to her we're done with this guy but yeah it, it's it's great to have women on the team i mean it's it's a it's it makes the team it really does and yeah, we're all you know a little different too. yeah everybody you know? everybody has a different personality too yeah yes yes so let's talk about the the other the other members of the team. Like you know, mm -hmm. how how did they how did they get on? Did you did you guys select them, or were you guys already like you know friends and just like hey, come and join? 
Well, we have been investigating, you know, we, we, Heidi's been, you know, investigating with us for a long time. And then when we started, we were thinking about starting the new team. Of course, you know, Heidi was instrumental in getting that together. And uh, Alexis, also, we have been investigating with her for quite a while. And so Tim and I both are co-founders of the team. And Alexis and Heidi are the team leaders. And they kind of help assist us with, you know, managing events, um, setting up locations, uh, you know, all the, the stuff that goes on behind the scenes, the media, the, you know, all the boring blah, blah, blah stuff. And, uh, but it helps keep everything running. And um, they're really instrumental with keeping the organization where it is for our team. And then Sasha, Rachel, and Selva are joining us as investigators. And, you know, together we all bring something a little different to the table, which is cool because everybody kind of has their own voice on the team and everybody brings their own unique talents. You know, some, you know, Alexis loves using the the dowsing rods. She gets great responses with the dowsing rods. You know, we have, I, I love using, um, you know, my spirit box, my recorder. You know, we all kind of have, and, and Heidi, I have to say this because if she's still on, she's the queen of cat balls. <laughs> Those little uh, light up. <laughs> They're like little cat toys. And uh, she loves, she has cats. And of course, she loves the little cat toys little light up cat balls. And they're interesting because they're a little motion sensor device. So you can use those as trigger objects. And, you know, it's always a lot of fun, but she always has an abundance of those, which is hilarious. And, you know, it's just, it's a great group. And it's just, it's so wonderful to be a part of a team with people that bring, you know, just wonderful personalities to the table. Everybody, you know, brings enthusiasm to the table. And we're just all, you know, really excited to investigate. And I think that is just, Part of what makes our team what it is. Yep, that's cool. There's like, uh, I don't think anybody's really looking to get on TV, so it's always the it's always it's either the clients or the guests at the events first. We want to make sure the client knows we're there to work and find answers, and the clients know that we're there to help them enjoy it because they're part of the team for the night, and that's. That's the way it should be. You know, it 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 should be your your team is there to assist and help find answers, or to actually introduce people who think they know about the field to the field, and how fun it can be, and how sometimes tedious it can be. You know, and that's just the way it is. But yeah, wow. it's fun. We have a great time with it. Wow. I love it. I love it. Love so, all. how many of you? Uh, how many uh, is it now for this group? Three, six, or seven? Seven. Seven. I love that number. number. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tim is overpowered by all the feminine energy. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I keep my hair. <laughs> yeah, we all have long hair. I think Selva has the longest hair in the group, right? Selva has the longest hair. Selva yeah, has yeah. Hair. <laughs> oh, the long yeah. hair. <laughs> but of course, you know, it's you know, it's like it's really no egos involved. Everybody's just out to have a good time. You know, we do something usually by every other week, even if it's just meeting up somewhere to investigate the play. You know, just um. Enjoy each other's company. See if we can get some evidence. It's really a laid back atmosphere, which yeah. is good. Cause that's what you need. You don't want uptight because you know that that's felt when you're in a place. You know, it can be felt by the spirits or by the guests or the client. So it's good to have a real positive team come in. Yes, yes. Now I did see, uh, like. Uh, you guys, you know, getting into the investigations and having people join and be a part of the team, you know, for the night and things like that. Uh, do you guys plan on doing like more uh, live investigations? You know, we do try to do live as often as we can. And I think, you know, we're, we're only going to go live when we don't have any guests because gotcha. it's not really fair if someone pays to be at an event and we're focused on the phone. 
And, you know, when we're doing an investigation with guests, we're trying to like kind of interact with them and have them be a part of the investigation, have them feel comfortable. And, you know, like the last, last Saturday we had an event and I didn't really record hardly anything, which was a, a huge blow to my, you know, I, I just wanted all of this evidence that we were capturing, but I was not recording. I didn't have my phone in my hand because I was kind of holding all the other equipment trying to help everybody. And I was just like, oh no, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. But uh, what's interesting are the lives. We try to go live when we can, either before an event or after an event. And then we'll also try to go live when we're just kind of hanging out, just the investigators, no guests. And what, what's cool about the lives is some people have said to me, you know, privately through DMs and also in comments, that by doing the live, it really makes the situation less scary for them because they can see what goes into it. They can see that we're in a group. They can see we're having fun. They can see we're laughing, we're joking, we're taking questions. And also they can see in real time if any activity is happening. And they can also see if there's no activity happening because sometimes that happens too. And I think it's a very honest way to show what we do, especially, you know, with people connecting with other investigators or enthusiasts that are not, you know, in our city. And, but I've actually had people reach out in our city that say, Hey, I'm really interested in coming to an event, but I really want to check out a live before I come because I just want to know what to expect. And I think it's a great thing to do. And I know sometimes we've had to cancel lives because we didn't have any service because some areas are a little bit more remote than others. And that's always a bummer when that happens, but we really can't do much to control it. But we do, we do try to go pretty often. So I hope to be, you know, in the next coming weeks, hopefully since all the investigations we have coming up in April are all just team only. They're not um, open to the public. So we'll have more of a chance to go live, I think, at that point. Yes. yes. I actually, uh, with the events that all of you throw, the first thing I thought of was I hope they do a tour. If it, Whether you go live or you invite people to uh, to the event. I hope you are able to travel. I know there's like a lot of stuff in South Florida, but there's also like so much history here in Philadelphia. <laughs> there's a couple of cases here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I, I think one of the ones that I remember the most is there's a mansion here in Chestnut Hill, actually. And this was the same mansion where Thomas Jefferson was there. Napoleon was there. Um, so there were some people who said reportedly that they saw him. They saw Thomas Jefferson in this building. Um, there was also reported a little boy ghost that was in there. There was a family living there and the little boy, um, he, he had a brother and the brother saw his, his younger brother, a skeleton of him. And a couple of days later, that little boy died. Oh, wow. Um, mysteriously, we and no one knows how, um, he just died. So that mansion is is the first thing I think about here in Philadelphia. I'll uh, I'll send it to you, like what the mansion is called. It's, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a, it's a mansion in Chestnut Hill. Definitely send you it to me. Been there? I, I, I want to go. No. <laughs> I'm not going without y'all. <laughs> we'll have to come. I want to do, I mean, there's just so much in Pennsylvania. I, mm -hmm. I definitely want to do Philly. I've actually never been to Philly Savannah. as an adult. I used to live up in upstate New York. And I don't know if you guys know this. I don't think it's around anymore. But when I was a kid, there was um, like a, I don't know, a place you would go to that had like a, a Noah's Ark. And you could go to like a Noah's Ark thing and you could like see all the animals. It was just outside Philly. Hmm. I don't know if anybody out there knows this, but... My family drove all the way out there because they thought it was cool as, you know, for, you know, a kid to see this, but I was too young to enjoy Philly. So I want to go back and eat the food and enjoy the space and go through all the history. And I also want to do Gettysburg. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we, we do have a lot of um, people that were buried, bur buried, what? Buried here <laughs> from the Civil yeah. War. We actually have some people um, that was on the Titanic. Oh, that is, yeah, really? that was buried here. Yes. In Philly. Yes. yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. why I, I want y'all to come. So I, I'm not going in there in those places alone. I'm not doing it. <laughs> no, I know. I've actually looked up flights to Philly and from South Florida. It's actually not that expensive. Just saying. Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie Alexis. Salva. 
I mean, we can stay at your school, right? You got you have many rooms in that school. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And then we'll yeah. just investigate in a few of those, and we'll let you know if we see anything. Yes, I uh, I call it Hogwarts. It's literally <laughs> a, an adult dormitory. I don't think anything is here, but you can definitely check for us, please. <laughs> It's funny. This. I, I've done a lot of schools down here on the sly. You know, principals. I know a lot of principals down here. And they'll call me and say, hey, Tim, can you come check out my school? I think something's going on. But don't tell the cleaning people while you're here because they won't come back. I go, well, I'll, I'll tell them we're testing new equipment, new security equipment. And I've, gone, I've done 10, 12 open public schools on the sly. And we've, I've caught some pretty cool stuff in schools. Schools are always active. They're active because I think a lot of spirits find solace in that location as being a safe space. And, you know, they're gra they gravitate towards it because they might have really felt comfortable there. And, you know, it's that's kind of sweet in a way, knowing that yeah. they, feel, they find safety in, in a school. Yeah, you said I to, I actually I was hoping my next stop would be Philly, the vet, when I was playing ball. But the bosses had a different idea that I wasn't going to go to Philly and play in the vet. So we had an agreement that they quit paying me and I quit playing ball. So but that was my <laughs> stop was Philly. You know. Yes. Yes. I I can see it, man. I can I can see it. You know. But the but the spirits. The spirits need you, man. Spirits. Oh, no, uh, yeah. That's, right. that's, that's the call. That's, that's the calling, you know. That's the calling. Um, especially like we have Pennhurst out here. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We, we have Pennhurst. We, we have Eastern State Penitentiary. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah there's we, so much stuff up there. You should go to Gettysburg. So, I mean, I've investigated Shiloh because my family's from Tennessee. It's a, the Civil War. Um, Shiloh. That place was crazy. Just walking around. So I'm sure Gettysburg is, is 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 lives up to the hype because I know Shiloh was crazy when I was up there when my dad I take my dad goes on and freak out. I'll sit in the car and drink coffee. Okay, dad, I'll be back in a little while. <laughs> you know? But yeah, yeah. it's like yes, it's got it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun, you know. So how does how does the I have a question? How does the family like? react to like what you guys what you guys do you know especially because sometimes you're out all you know pro possibly out all night you know doing an investigation and you know it's like all right you got you got to be understand like i gotta get these gotta get these uh these evps gotta get you know gotta gotta do these investigations honey you know or <laughs> whatever, whatever it is like how does how, how do you guys balance your passion for investigation with with real life you know which i think would be interesting you know on it because i feel like we we really don't get a lot of that from from investigators you hear a lot of that you know i mean my, my wife is incredible i mean half she'll go birthdays come around you want some more ghost stuff i go i mean we're way past ghost stuff we're <laughs> we're in the developers just well have someone make something for you for your birthday or something and and if I, like I say, if I leave for an investigation, she goes, have fun. Don't bring nothing home, but have fun. And then my son will listen to my EVPs and confirm stuff for me. He doesn't cuss. I go, Shane, what do you think that said? And he goes, Daddy, I think it said F off. I go, yeah, I think that said too. So <laughs> you're cool about it. You know, that's the only way it can work. It, it really can. Because, I mean, I've met investigators who aren't allowed to go out more than once a month, you know, oh, they go, I got to keep the wife happy. I can't go this week or next week. You know, I go, well, okay. Got to keep the wife happy. That's Wait. important. It is. The support's, it important. Is. the support's important, you know. In mm -hmm. Mike, he's the bomb. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Dina's husband, he's the bomb. He's like. He is. He's really amazing. He actually Aww. was one of the ones that encouraged me to do it more. And. He got me my very first um, K meter, which is a little K2 meter. It's a little EMF detector. And he just was very encouraging. And he's every step of the way just wants me to be involved. He doesn't really love it, but he puts up with me when we're on vacation. And I am always wanting to either A, you know, go out to eat in a supposedly haunted restaurant or B, stay in a haunted hotel. 
or C, stop at a cemetery. And he's just, you know, there's a sport about it. And he'll, you know, he, but, but I also, you know, I, I, I support his passions too. He's a musician and he's also into cars and I will happily, you know, go to the music store with him and sit around and, you know, watch him play guitars and, and, you know, enjoy that. And I, you know, will be there for every show that he plays. I will be around for every time he wants to go to a race or to watch, you know, YouTube videos of the latest of whatever car that, you know, he's <laughs> explaining these things to me. I'm like, yeah, honey. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> telling me about like wheels and engines. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we, the thing is, you know, you got to support your partner and, you know, whatever that, that passion that they have, you have to support. And thankfully he's cool with me. You know, I go out very late doing investigations. I also do overnight investigations and, you know, I'll go solo, you know, to various hotels and he's totally fine with that. And, um, what's really cool is he actually had a paranormal experience, um, a couple of birthdays ago, we were in St. Augustine and we did a private investigation and he got his first little taste of something kind of happening in front of him that he couldn't explain. And he kind of looked over at me and he goes, I have chills. <laughs> and for him to say that, he's like the king skeptic. I'm like, oh, really? You have chills? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and then he's like, you know, I think it's time for us to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a little too much for him. So we ended up leaving, but he was, you know, he was excited about it. And he said, you know, I can't explain it. I'm still going to feel skeptic, you know, be a skeptic, but I can say I don't have an explanation. And he still is one of those people that I need to see a ghost. I need to see a full body apparition. And I know that if the two of us, if anybody's going to see it, it's going to be him just because he's Mr. Skeptic and I'm the one who wants to see it. I'm probably going to be, you know, the one that never sees one. So, but I think that's important and it's so nice to have someone that supports you, you know, in anything that you do. And I love them. Mikey, if you're listening, you're the best. Oh, Mikey, (laughs) shout shout to to Mikey's new car. Oh, yeah. He's got the coolest new car. Yeah, he has a uh, brand new, well, it's it's new to him, but he got his like crazy Mustang and and really loud and obnoxious. And I love it. I think it's fun. (laughs) He's like, I got to deal with this exhaust all the time. I'm like, it's great. He's like, the neighbors don't love it. I'm like, well, the neighbors, don't worry about the neighbors. Uh, what, what about you, Sasha? Like, how does how do your family or friends, you know, uh, take take you in the paranormal investigation game? Well, thankfully, my mom loves it. So actually, sometimes, so we actually live in a hundred year old home. I live with my mom. I live in her attic. That's where I am right now. <laughs> it's uh, my own like studio space, which is amazing. But my mom has literally, she is very like six cents, she can feel a lot. And so she's even been like laying in her bed, been asleep, woken up with a weird feeling and seen like a shadow person with a top hat in her doorway. And so I'm like, oh, why haven't I seen him? But that's fine. And so uh, (laughs) waiting for that day. Of course, now the other night I was like, called her up because of course she was in Fort Lauderdale over the weekend. And I'm like, hey, um, I heard some noises. Can you just check the cameras and make sure nobody just like broke in and trying to murder me? Okay, cool, cool. Okay, we're good. <laughs> but otherwise, we'll be together and we'll do sessions. She can, you know, she can't hear always amazing web either. So it's really, really great time. Both of us being somewhat deaf together. At least it's like half and half, a hundred percent. And um, And she'll go with me to St. Augustine and we'll take the weekend and adventure and she'll go on ghost tours, but she has a limit, right? She's like, okay, that's enough. Now I'm done today. And I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to stay up and keep going. She's like, okay, see you tomorrow. (laughs) My friends, on the other hand, I finally got one of them to come to a ghost hunt this last weekend. But other than that, the rest are like, I'm okay. Thank you. And I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody's got different, different comfort levels and, you know, uh, you know, it's, it, but it's always fun when your friends, you know, uh, respect your passions and they jump in with you and they support you, you know, just like your family and stuff like that. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's important. Yeah. It makes it, it makes it easier. Oh yeah. Especially once you start doing privates, you know, especially if there's like a 
a child involved and it's a private residence. You know, I've gone out, you know, in four in the afternoon and done stuff. I've gone out on weeknights and done stuff. What all the support of my wife. She's like, yeah, go see me and find some answers for him. So, do so you she's, guys always, she's been great about that for, you know, since we've been married. She's always been great about it. Awesome. Awesome. Do, do you guys find, you find more activity in like private investigations or public investigations? You know, with the uh, with the public, I, I guess it depends. Well, go ahead. No, depends. Go ahead. I, I just think you know, it just some nights you get you know, or some situations you get a lot of activity, and some situations you don't. And we've gotten, and I think also depending on, let's say, if it was a public event, there you don't know the people's energy that are on that event. There might be somebody who's a sensitive who attracts spiritual energy and then everything lights up that night. Everything goes wild because they're drawn to a particular person and that person's energy. And then there might be another night where maybe somebody's energy is really off. I know we were talking about energy earlier, but like if somebody's in a bad mood and that can disrupt an entire investigation because their bad mood is sending a vibe to whatever energies are in that house and they don't like it. And so I, I kind of think, you know, as far as evidence goes, we've gotten some amazing evidence on events and we've also gotten some amazing evidence, you know, just for, you know, when we were out for ourselves and it's kind of hard to pinpoint which is better. So I think it's good to do both. It's, it's kind of cool because, you know, the privates, sometimes you can get a validation quicker. like. Um, I did a lady's house one night and I asked her, I said, I saw this baseball memorabilia her dad had left her. I said, ask, ask, what was, did he like the Yankees? And he hated the Yankees. He was a Mets freak. And all the DVP was, no. And then all of a sudden, ask him something that you only know. And she asked us about what's around my neck. And he said, my ring. So you get something like that right away. Now, when you do public places, especially hotels, you never know because, you know, a thousand people probably stayed in one room. Maybe one, you know, off themselves. Who knows? You never know that history. But if you do private, you can get in, you can probably get a quicker validation of, of any evidence. That's the cool thing I like about privates. Oh, I like you can control quieter. it. Yeah, and you know as long as she can control it, you know don't let don't lead them on too much. Just say, hey, ask this, and ask that. But I mean, I've also gone to privates where it's all of a sudden. One night, I did a private, and four people walked in the room, in the house, and it turns out we were the entertainment for the night. They really didn't. They they wow. lied about everything. They lied about all the activity. They just oh, wanted to have an investigation for their buddies on a Saturday night. So, wow, I, I, I would I would suppose that there would be there are people out there like that who just you know just they they think oh let's call up the Ghostbusters and you know have a have a fun night you know they don't they don't know that they don't know the uh, you know you take it serious you know and you're you're actually out there helping people and you know uh, sometimes especially I would assume in private sessions it can get it maybe can get a little emotional you know sometimes uh depending on what people are going through you yeah. know yeah so yeah, yeah. i mean because sometimes we find things that they that they're very comfortable with like we did a house once and we caught a head apparition on film and it turns out it matched grandpa's face shape hairline and grandpa died in the house so all of a sudden they were comfortable with what was going on if they feared it might be grandpa they were literally going to sell the house at that at one point Mm -hmm. But then after that, I still stop by and have coffee with them. You know, twelve years later, they're still in the same house. So, you know, but it's kind of fun when you get that answers for them, even if it's not paranormal. If it's an electrical leak, it's it's still an answer that finds them relief. Yes, yes. Are you going to say something? Oh, um, I guess. How do you distinguish? between the, like in actual paranormal <laughs> reported events versus psychological ones? 
That's a good question for Tim. I think. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, we did. Um, what about you? Because know, usually we'll do like a preliminary. And a family called me in once because their son, he thought he was possessed. So once I started talking to the family, it turns out this this kid, he was like 22, he was on psych meds, but he was up for three days straight watching everything that he could find about Jin, all these different guys from around the world. So the psych meds you're on, he was, you're supposed to sleep with them or they have a boomerang effect. So eventually I, I got him on the side and I convinced him to go home and get a nap. You know, and I, the family called me a couple of days later and said everything was fine. So it's just, you know, the reason for the preliminaries is you're kind of, you know, you're trying to feel out the place for one thing. And then you're trying to feel out the person. You know, I did a place one night where the lady said 2.30 in the morning, she saw spirits. Sure mm -hmm. enough, 2.30 in the morning, she came out of her room with a bottle of Jack. <laughs> yelling, the spirits are here. The spirits are here. I'm like, okay, good. Okay. So at least we found the reason for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Oh. Yeah, but you know, I think I think Gina can pick up things real easy on people. She's a good judge. Heidi is Sasha. You know, we yeah. can pick up a lot of stuff just talking to people. We had uh, an event I want to say a few months back, and we were doing. You know, we allowed the guests to join various sessions, and there was this one lady that just got very theatrical with it. She was clearly faking everything, and she was like. Ooh, I see a woman and she's jumping out of the window and like freaking people out. And, you know, basically we sort of, you know, when it comes to that kind of stuff, we have to kind of shut it down because, you know, by someone doing that, maybe they think they're entertaining their friends or maybe she maybe has, you know, some sort of mental illness and, she, you know, she, whatever reason she's doing that. But, it was freaking other people out when she started acting that way. So we had to kind of, you know, after that was all finished up, you know, some of the other guests were saying, Oh, you know, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, you know, some people experience things differently and, you know, trying to kind of, you know, put their mind at ease. But, you know, there's going to be people that come out for various reasons and they want to fake things, whether it's because they truly believe it's real or because they want to play a game or they like Tim said, you know, we were the entertainment for the night. Um, there's so many different reasons, but basically we have to kind of, you know, shut that kind of stuff down because it's just not fair for everybody else. And, you know, we don't want to freak anybody else out. And, you know, you can kind of pick those behaviors out from very pretty easily from, I think the average person, um, you can kind of pick out the theatrical ones and you can kind of see who's, you know, BSing and who isn't. Uh, but it's just, you know, I think it's one of those things where the paranormal is very interesting to a lot of people and it attracts, you know, people from every crowd, from every walk of life. And just like with anything, you're going to get some people that kind of take it too far and it, whether they feel like they need to fake something because they want validation or they want to, you know, whatever the reason is, there's going to be that once in a while, you know, that, that person in the punch bowl. And, um, you know, we, we just have to make sure that we, you know, make sure everybody else feels comfortable and safe, you know, and I, and I, I ended up speaking with a few guests that night and I said, you know, everything's fine. You know, there's nothing scary here. You know, there's nothing to worry about. And, you know, we've investigated this location many times. There's nothing negative that we know of. There's nothing negative reported from the, you know, the management. And I'm, I'm sorry that, that might have scared you a little bit. And it's just been, you know, yeah, you, you run into it every once in a while, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's always jerks out there, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. wanting, wanting to ruin it, ruin it for everybody, you know. Um, yeah, we got a, we got Michael Anthony in the building, you know. Hi. Hey, Michael. Hey. You know? uh, hey. Also, uh, Jordan in the building from earlier. I, I see you, Jordan. I see you, Jordan. Thanks for hey, stopping Jordan. by. You know, thanks for stopping by. Uh, yes, Kira, it's so upsetting when people fake things, makes it harder, I'm sure, for those who have true experiences. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And it, you know, it, it you know, because you want to, you want to validate, you know, people's experiences and you also want to, uh, you know, just put, 
by you guys putting yourselves out there, it it makes it more real. You know, it, it, it makes it, especially seeing all the equipment and the time and the dedication that you guys put in. And, you know, you guys are actually helping out people, you know, and giving people experiences, you know, uh, which is another thing that I wanted to ask. Like, what if, you know, how would, how would, if you, you know, your average person going up and they're like, you know what, I want to sign up for one of these haunts with the afterlife all-stars, you know, like what, how would, how would you prep? Like how, how would you prep us pretty much if we, if we were like, like we're signing up for an investigation, you know, is there anything that we need to know? Is there any mindset that we need to be in before we step into this, you know, um, investigation with the afterlife all-stars? I mean, we usually do a, you know, a lecture before where we talk about all the equipment, um, how to do it, and things like that. We just go through the basic. We call it a paranormal boot camp. And then we call it learn it, then do it. And then, you know, we always, you know, we take a little break before we start the actual, because people actually investigate with us. It's not a walking tour. And then, you know, the team is just so open and friendly with everybody. We'll just, you know, start chatting to people and just listen to their experiences, what they, and we kind of get a feel what they think. And then we just let them know, you know, just, you know, if you feel, send something, let us know. You can ask the questions. You can hold the equipment. If you have any questions on the equipment, things like that. We're just open the whole time. It's a, it's a general, it's the flow of the investigation that we're doing a real investigation and they're part of it. Yeah. And we've also had some situations uh, in the past where, you know, if someone does feel uncomfortable, we try to do everything that we can to f make them feel better. Um, there was a woman at one point that was investigating with us at the very haunted King for Marty house. And one of the infamous rooms in this house is, is known as the doll room. It's actually been featured on that show. I don't know if you've ever seen Fright Club with Jack Osborne and the Ghost Brothers, but uh, they featured a video. It's kind of like one of those shows where they watch videos sent in from other people and they react and they talk about these videos. And um, so it was on that show. It's, it's a very haunted location. And as soon as this woman walked in the room, she immediately felt very uncomfortable. She said she did not like the energy. She did not like the dolls. And she preferred to stand in the hallway. So I stood out in the hallway with her so she wasn't by herself. And, you know, she was fine investigating the rest of the house. But she just felt that that room was giving her bad vibes. So, you know, we try to tell the guests, if you're not feeling it, let us know and we'll accommodate you. We can also take a guest to another part of the property. There are, you know, at the, at the locations that we investigate, there's often more than one you know, space within that location that we can move around to. So if there's a space that they do enjoy, you know, we have enough team members where we can split off and we can take them to a place that they like. Uh, in the in the case of the history of Fort Lauderdale property, we have a schoolhouse, an old hotel and the pioneer home, the King for Marty house. So we can essentially kind of bounce people around to wherever they feel most comfortable. So I think that's the most important thing really is to know that when you're on an investigation, the guest comfort is paramount, you know, for us. And we want to make sure everybody feels good about it. And also, you know, everybody has their limits. Maybe there's, we don't force people to try things. We don't force people to hold the equipment, but if they want to, they can, but maybe mm -hmm. they just might want to observe. Maybe they just feel mm -hmm. more comfortable observing others and kind of soaking in the vibe. And that's cool too. So it's kind of, I think for whatever flavor you're looking for, you know, there's an option for, you know, if you're a thrill seeker and you want to be the one in the chair doing the S session with the blindfold in the box, or if you want to be maybe more on the outside there asking questions, or if you just want to listen and take it in, you know, there's all different ways that you can enjoy those experiences. Yeah. Cause I mean, we have enough equipment where we can lay out rim pods and millimeters all over the place that are waiting for the people when they show up. But if they want to grab one and use it themselves, they have that option, you know, cause we never, you know, I've never said, hey, you ask the next question. It's like, hey, would you like to ask a question? No, okay. Okay. But, you know, we just want them to feel part of it to their comfort level. Because yes. you never want to, like, force people. Because then they're not enjoying it. And they, they think they're being put on the spot. Especially if there's a crowd, a, a good crowd that night. You don't want to put people and embarrass them, put them on the spot. Yeah. So we just say... You know, and I always tell them up front, I go, you can play with the equipment or there's equipment laying around for you to watch being used. 
Awesome. And then, yeah. Awesome. But I think the guests have a good time. They, you know, at the end of the night, I think they all have a good time. So That's good. Yeah. The team does that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. I yeah, and, I, and I ask a question. Oh, sure. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I feel I feel like I'd be comfortable asking a question, especially sure. you guys know what you're doing. It's, it's funny because we interviewing all these people, especially in the horror community, like a lot of these people become like household names to us. Like and Gina is one of them. So like whenever there's something in the paranormal realm, we're like, all right, you know, I got to ask Gina about this. You know, what would Gina do? You know, it's a it's a thing. It's a thing, you know. But uh, yes, thank you all for, for rocking out with us, you know, uh, tonight, you know, and asking, answering all of our questions, you know, just getting to know you guys in the team a little bit better. You know, thank you all in the chat for rocking out with us, you know, uh, double feature podcast, you know, Mika and Kara, uh, Heidi, Michael, uh, Jordan, everybody who stopped by, you know, in love of horror. Thank you all for stopping by everybody who showed love. If I Wilkie, if I forgot your name, uh, oh John, Jonathan Bowie. What? 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 Jonathan Bowie, the composer, the genius, <laughs> Brosar in the building. Thank you for stopping by, brother. Thank you for stopping by. But yes, if you are interested and in South Florida, you know, make sure you check them out. The Afterlife All Stars. You know, they are awesome. Uh, everyone here is top tier, great at what they do. Um, hopefully I can get them, we can get them back on the show, you know, cause we would love to, you know, talk with, talk with them more about, about other things, about other interests yes. as well, you know? Um, so do you, do you have any, any other, anything else to say? You know? Nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, do you got, do you guys have any, anything upcoming, like any events or anything mm -hmm. upcoming that you want the, the people to know about? We don't have any uh, public events posted right now, but we're always going to be, you know, adding new events to our calendar. So I would just say, keep a lookout on the page. We do update events pretty often, usually every other month or so. And, you know, also we're, we, we just kind of investigate around South Florida. So if anybody wants to meet up and join us, you know, shoot us a message and uh, say hi. Yes, yes, make, make definitely, most definitely. You know, they're they're out there and they're they everyone that I've seen and you know, just watching you guys' videos, everybody seems so nice and you know, down to earth and it's a very it seems like very a very chill environment, which I'm all about. A very chill environment. Yeah. You know? yeah, yes. like, remember if anybody has any activity in South Florida area, I mean being far central, uh activity they think their house or business or something. We come in, we never charge for investigations. We're just there to find answers for the concerns. So they can reach out to us. Yes, yes, I love it, I love it. Well, that's gonna be another episode of Evil Live, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, peace, love, and horror. And we're out of here. Make sure you check them out, Afterlife All-Stars. Peace out. And follow everybody.